Donald Trump throughout his career has always relied on a very small circle of family and a couple of close associates. And in Jared Kushner, he has both. He has a family member as a son-in-law, and also Jared Kushner is a trusted advisor. The effort will be led by Assistant to the President and Senior Advisor Jared Kushner. President Trump has given Jared Kushner an extraordinary portfolio of responsibility. That includes bringing peace to the Middle East, reinventing the United States government, and many other issues. So it is a large, large task. Uh, from Kushner's perspective, he is 10 years in the business world. He ran a newspaper, The Observer, in New York. Uh, he ran a real estate empire. But that's basically it. Whether that prepared him for what he's taking on today is a big question. Jared was thrust in the spotlight at a pretty young age. Um, his dad went to prison when he was uh, in his uh, mid-young 20s. And Jared had to take over the company. He was chief executive when he was 25 and still in graduate school. And one of the first buildings he bought is this building, 666 Fifth Avenue. Uh, at the time when um, Jared and his, and his company bought it, it was the most expensive purchase ever made in America of an American office building. And the market collapsed almost immediately afterwards. What's going on in the stock market, and I know that the two of you know this, is a sideshow to a housing and debt problem in this country, whether we're down So Kushner had to renegotiate the debt that he owed, which meant people who held that debt would be paid less. There were a lot of very tense negotiations, and long story short, Kushner was able to renegotiate that debt. And Richard Mack, according to other people who were in those negotiations, was one of the most resistant people to that idea. Uh, he was one of a number of different investors and lenders in the 666 Fifth Avenue property. He was upset that Jared had promised that he would make these payments, that the banks would be paid back at a certain rate, and unhappy that Jared came back saying, now I'm only going to pay you this, or a, a lower amount or a lesser amount, and some of that debt would be sort of set aside. Jared at the time owned a newspaper, the New York Observer. He went to the editor of the Observer that he'd hired, a woman named Elizabeth Spears, and told her, that there was a person named Richard Mack and that there was a negative story about him. You know, we were having a meeting and he said, uh, you know, there's a story I think we should do and it's really important to me. And he gave me this tip that if it had checked out, it really would have been an observer story. And then the reporter came back to me and said, you know, it's just not true. There's nothing there. You know, we'd meet weekly and he'd be like, so, you know, is there any progress in that story? And I would go, you know, Jared, there's just everyone we talk to tells us it's not true. Some years later, Kushner was asked at a conference, uh, how do you deal with conflicts of interest? He basically said they're inevitable, that if you don't want conflicts, go to your apartment and lock the door. If you don't want conflicts, just go in your apartment and stay there and mm -hmm. lock the door. And don't, <laughs> don't go to work, don't do anything. Um, but it's a sort of a, um, an example of the way that Jared's two type of businesses interacted. He would some, occasionally use the observer as a way of, as a sort of a weapon against his enemies or rivals in real estate. And I think it raised questions among people in New York real estate about what kind of character Jared had. The photographic image you may have or the video image you may have of him because of the way he looks with his boyish appearance doesn't tell you the whole story. In fact, um, he is a sort of harder-edged ver uh, version of what you see out there and more like Trump in the way he deals with folks.